Workout two of the gymnast throwdown is three rounds for time. You begin with 20 double unders or 40 single unders, followed by 10 alternating dumbbell single arm devil press. You will then move to 40 double unders or 80 single unders and finish with 20 single arm dumbbell thrusters. You will alternate arms every five reps on the thruster. So team, we are here now to watch Alex and Lottie take on workout two of the gymnast throwdown. This week's workout is brought to you by RX Smart Gear, who are sponsoring a workout, probably because we've got some skipping in this week's workout. We do. Single unders and double unders are on the menu this week. So you know the workout. Let's just go ahead straight away down to the floor and watch Alex and Lottie as they take on this workout. Bitter rivals. Okay, and what are your thoughts, firstly, when you look at this workout? Three rounds of time, uh, three movements. Uh, one movement which is increasing in reps throughout the workout. Um, well, I'm just thinking there's a lot of transitions and it's definitely going to be a faster workout. Obviously, 12-minute time cap means that we're expecting people to be under that time cap. So if you compare it to workout number one, which was a 14-minute AMRAP, this one is going to be a lot quicker, especially for those who are proficient with changing the dumbbell over and proficient with skipping. Yeah, I think a big difference between... Uh, the live and the perform compete category. Of course, single unders, slightly less complex movement, uh, but there's also a lot more repetition. So the time naturally for someone who's going to do 40 and 80 unbroken single unders versus someone who's going to do 20 and 40 unbroken double unders yeah. is probably going to be a little bit longer in terms of the time taken to complete the workout yeah. for the live category. Now, when we talk about the compete, uh, perform compete category, yes, the double unders uh, do offer a potential for a bottleneck. Uh, in a sense that uh, if someone is not proficient in the movement, the same can be said for single unders as well, then potentially uh, a lot of lost time on that movement if someone's having to break it up consi uh, consistently or is being forced to break it up because of um, definitely yeah. you know, less than adequate technique. For sure. Um, I mean, we're watching Al and Lottie go through here, who actually are both, both pretty proficient on the skip and rope. So it was always going to be a bit of a race on the dumbbell. Um, we know Alex is super powerful, so anything shorter, he's kind of licking his lips at. Lottie probably more towards the enduring side of an athlete. Mm. So she was probably not looking forward to going head to head here with Al. Um, but you can see how fast that he was just basically throwing and pulling the dumbbell back down to the floor. He was jumping back and jumping up and then you see he's changing overhead with the dumbbell. Mm. So he's really proficient and he's just smooth with his movement. Uh, Lottie's kind of taking a couple of breaths here and there because she probably doesn't have that high power output as compared to Al. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if he slows down in the third round. I actually didn't watch this one live as I did in the first one. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if his rounds change at all. So a couple of things we've seen already, uh, which is the difference between the two athletes. You've already talked about cycle speed. Alex being a powerful athlete, he's also a good squatter. Yeah. So he moves up and down fast in a thruster. Lottie is also a good squatter, just not quite the same cycle speed. Uh, but we did see transitions there from we know on the thruster we have to swap every five repetitions now yeah. what we see Lottie doing bringing it down to the shoulder passing it over from one shoulder to the other then starting next thruster yeah. Alex was actually passing over mid air you know change over above his head and going straight into it so Alex actually probably saving you know a half a second there yeah. on each transition and that equates to you know two to four seconds on each set of thrusters which equates to you know anywhere between six to 12 seconds over the whole workout if that's yeah. something you so just in that really small detail the transition of a dumbbell can save a lot of time now let's talk about the dumbbell devil press in terms of differences in technique what are you seeing here so you see Al goes from straight overhead they both transition overhead but Al's basically slamming it into the floor where Lottie lowers and then it goes back between the legs so again we're talking probably half a second per rep but when you got 10 reps at five seconds extra over three rounds, 15 seconds. I mean, I think Alex is just a bit silly here that he refuses for some reason to tie up his shoes. Mm -hmm. um, he's a very proficient skipper. And I think the fact that his shoes are probably undone doesn't help him every now and then. It probably catches, but I think, I think it's, it, I don't, maybe he doesn't actually know how to tie his shoes. Yeah, I think it must, must be the cool thing to do, do nowadays. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think uh, I was, like I said, really proficient. He's happy just to pick up the rope and go straight away. Um, I think if we're talking about, again, the small nuances of the workout and how to improve your pace, 
You notice Al does a single under before his first set of double unders every time. For those people that can go straight into double unders as a very first rep, again, you're saving like milliseconds to start with, but over three rounds and you're going back to skipping twice. And if you break as well, mm. that's a lot of time made up. Yeah, so we're, we're talking a lot now about you know how you can squeak out or save yourself valuable seconds in this workout and move yeah. faster. Now, for a lot of people, moving at your fastest speed and doing everything unbroken is not going to be necessarily a good strategy for this workout. Yeah. So make sure you're not taking what we're saying here and thinking, okay, how can I move as fast as possible? This is actually more about how can I move fast but be sustainable over three sets? For sure. Like you said, it's a faster workout than we saw in workout one, assuming you're proficient in all the movements. But we would still probably like to see from a strategy standpoint, we talk about splits all the time. So for a three rounds of time, the splits is basically how long it takes you to complete a round. Yeah. And at the end of a workout, if we were to break it down, we would probably like to see something like a neutral split. A neutral split means the time is exactly the same every single set. A positive split would be that your time is increasing each mm. round so you're going slower and a negative split is where you start to see a slow first round then a faster next round and the fastest round being the last round yeah what would you typically for a well executed workout what do you think you'd probably typically see i think if you're like you said proficient you're executing this workout really well where we're probably going to see our finish around the six minute mark I'm expecting probably positive splits here where we know Al like loves to fly out the gates. So this is one where like for him, he's just thinking start hot and stay hot and just try and finish. Mm. You know, some people will do exactly the same thing and they'll blow up by a round and a half in. And then suddenly the positive split rather than being what Al had, which is an eight second increase from round one to round two, that would be like a 20 second increase and for other people suddenly like maybe even a minute more mm. uh, so that's not ideal what alex is doing is like just riding that line and kind of staying in the pain cave and he's really good at doing that other people that don't quite have the capacity will not be so yeah. they won't come out of the other end of it so well like alice what we do know is that if you're going to go really hot from the start and we're going to start to see positive splits, which is basically meaning you're slowing down because you're just fatigued and you can't uphold the same pace. That strategy is going to hurt a lot more. Yeah. And so if you're willing to suck up and endure the pain, then you can do that and probably still get an effective time and score. Yeah. However, if you're not up for really putting yourself in the pain cave and suffering through this workout, looking at something more like a neutral split, and then perhaps putting your foot down in your last bit of the, of the last round, yeah. maybe seeing a negative split in the last round, would probably be uh, a better strategy. Yeah, for sure. So Al's actually gone two minute round, 208, and then a 211 round. So ever so slightly slower. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually think that was probably more down to not his actual um, slowing down of movements, but he just broke, broke a few more times on each round of double unders, yeah. which obviously could be down to fatigue or you know shoulders burning a little bit. And you know, Lottie isn't far behind. So mm. like you really have to push pretty hard in this workout if, like you said, you are proficient with movements. I think if, you know, a lot of people are going to be looking at it and going, you know, it's only 20, 10, 20 reps or five on each arm each time for the dumbbell thrust and it's only 10 devil's press and people will probably want to go and broken in those movements. And I think it's just controlling the cadence of them, especially mm. with a movement like a devil's press where you're essentially, when you're essentially not doing anything at some point in that movement, when you're lying on the floor, you know, stepping back and actually just being slower with your movement is going to be a better idea rather than doing five reps, letting a dumbbell sit on the floor, then stepping back and then coming back yeah. in. You want to just stay at the movement and just keep chipping away slowly. Yeah. So we're seeing Lottie here kind of go into a first time where she had to put the dumbbell down. So you can really see fatigue start to creep in. You can see her body language, movement quality starting to decrease a little bit here. Both of them actually move really well. Something we haven't talked about that much is the skipping. Uh, the placing down of a skipping rope. We yeah. talk about it all the time when coaching it. Really important with this many transitions, you're coming in and out of a fresh new set of skipping twice in every single set. You really want to make sure you're laying that rope down so you're stepping out of it and stepping back into it. Yeah. It was only in the last round that we saw, saw Lottie kind of throw that rope out the way because she knew she didn't have any more. Yeah. So, you know, just some small nuances here that could make a really, 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 really big difference in terms of profic proficiency in this workout. Definitely. Okay, team, you've seen it now. You know what workout two is. You've seen two of our coaches go head to head in it. Good luck to all you guys doing it. Remember, you must film your attempts. Make sure you watch the movement standards and watch them carefully. You don't want to go through an attempt to this workout and realize you didn't uphold the standards and have to, unfortunately, do it again. Good luck to everyone on workout two. Thank you again to RX Smart Gear for sponsoring this workout. And you will see us back here next week for workout three. Thank you.